Welcome to MotoGP Mac, where MotoGP fans come to congregate and fanboys at Fairy Trade. Buddy, we finally got we got it all this weekend, didn't we? We finally got yeah. the showdown. We finally got that showdown, and like, fuck me, was it was, was the thing? No, look, saying that, I think. Oh yeah. By the way, what happened to the the uh, myth that oh you have arrow you can't pass? Well, that just got flushed down the toilet, done, didn't it? No one says you can't pass an arrow. Our, uh, but, people just said it makes it makes it, make, it makes it harder to pass. But like, let's yeah, be fair. Yeah, the, most people they, they take it to a stream. They go, "Oh, you can't pass with arrow." Yes, you can. You just can't. Yeah, what a, a lesser bike can't pass. A slower bike, you can't do a draft pass. But a, a lot of those passes were driven off the accelerations on out. Let's let's be yeah. fair and honest. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? One would yeah. dive in, and the other would go underneath them. And you know what I mean? So it was more that I thought, what that. But that battle had was nothing to do with Aero. Do you know what I mean? That was no. two fellas running no. different lines and deciding, fuck it, I'm either gonna like it's a kind of a it's a kind of a fruity one for 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 Martin, right? Because when I saw him running as close to these, uh, uh, there was one other rider that appeared into my mind of doing that, right? And I think I think half of the world knows that's Mark Marquez, right? It's only one rider that will ride that close to you. And he rides that close to you, A, to unsettle you, but B, if you're going for a championship and you're riding that close to your, your competitor, you crash, you're going to take your man with you. <laughs> Did you know what I mean? It's, so yep. while it was a risk, it was there was also a calculated risk there. But And and it, and both of the, Mark, Mark, Martin and Marquez both had that uh, point and shoot style. You know? They do, but no. Look, I look. I just thought it was. I thought it was brilliant. Brilliant. I think. Look, I give kudos to Peko. You know, Martin beat him off the line three times this weekend. Do you know what I mean? Every time he beat him off the line, but Peko learned. Do you know what I mean? He learned from the first time. Like, okay, right, I'm not gonna go so brave. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to leave him overshoot. Do you know what I mean? So. Right. And in the second time, and he did it to him twice in a row, and you're kind of going, "Fuck him up!" And you need to learn, like, do, do, do you know what I mean? Um, but the battle, brilliant! Like, that's exactly what motor motorbike racing is supposed to be about. I think, like, in a lap and a half, they'd pass each other five or six times. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you knew this, that wasn't going Aragon to be sustainable either. This mm-hmm. remember Aragon? You remember when uh, had Marquez and and, and Peco and Aragon? Yeah, yeah, just like that, just like that. It was for me. Yeah, look, it was it was how a, how a proper MotoGP race should be, um, you know. But you knew it was also at that level wasn't going to be sustainable for forever. Every yeah, day, do, you know, do you know what I mean? So like, I think four yeah. or five laps was actually quite a lot, you know. I'm um, surprised he did it. Think about it. Why would Pat? Why would Mar- uh, Martin? If Martin could to be second, okay. And still mm-hmm. win the race and, and, and calculate it out. Why take that risk of, of, of falling? If he had fell, he'd have been screwed, Martin. Yeah, but he was riding so close to Peko that if he fell, he was taking him with him. Like, the, the, like realistically, you know, he took the front in that he's either going to go into Peko or up the back of Peko. Do, do you know what I mean? There's like, that's the way I saw it. Like, do you know what I mean? So, I loved Cal- watching it, but it really wasn't a smart thing to do, you know. Yeah, well, look, I think he's confident in himself too, you know. And this is this is the other thing, you know. I definitely saw this weekend a, a major change in Martins. I know he's had like he's he was always fast, but he's never. I thought he'd be a little bit flustered this weekend. Do you know what I mean? Like, like look at qualifying on on a. Uh, on Saturday morning, right? You know, Martin did a time and everyone was like, all right, let's pack up and go home. It's fucking signed, sealed and delivered. Do you know what I mean? And X-Men a peck on, he went underneath it again. Like, and everyone was just left like, oh, fuck. Do you know what I mean? There, there's levels. And, you know, I did have a back and forth with people uh, for yesterday's sprint. And like in the sprint, Martin passed, Pico, you know, and, I, for me, Peko looked very, very comfortable. Like, he didn't look that he was leery for the pace. And I know people are saying, oh, the bike was twitching. It was in the first three or four laps, right? Yeah. So yeah. tires are not up to temperature, all of this stuff. 
you look at the race today, even with fucking three laps to go, Pecco was kicking the rear of that bike out. And maybe this is just to help educate it was, people. It wasn't, really, it wasn't controlled twitch. That sounds weird. But... No, but you see, no, you would see what you have to do, and this is something I've 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 been watching for the last couple of weeks, right? So the new mirror, new rear Michelin this year, right, is causing an awful lot of problems for riders, right? Because it has so much grip, right? So right. when they're going into the corners, they're losing the front end of the bike because the rear tire is pushing so much. Yeah. Right? So what you now have to do is you have to break the grip slightly. Do you know what I mean? Right. From the rear. Otherwise, you will carry way too much speed going into the corner, lose the front, and end up on your ass. And if you watch Peko and go back now, three, four races, you will see Peko's right on the front of it and coming into the braking zones, and you'll see the bike start to rotate around the headstock. Some of that is to help with braking, but also it is removing the rear grip that pushes the bike on going through the corner. So it's a style. So for me, I was like, oh, and I called it now three or four minutes after the race before any riders could do fucking interviews. And I was like, for me, he looked very comfortable. Do you know what I mean? He wasn't panicking. He wasn't running out, out, out crazy lines. He wasn't no, diving in no. deep, all of this stuff. And I was like, I thought the same thing. I thought he had this under control. I remember I, I, I called you. And I said, well, they're both going fast and they're both going smooth. Who's going to yeah. win? Yeah. Like, so, like, the ad twitches, I think that's more the style. Like, even if you saw it in today's race, right, where, like, realistically, in this, if it wasn't for that mistake yesterday, I do believe Pecco would have probably won the sprint. Do you know what I mean? He had that next layer going down. And looking at it, like, even from the times from testing in Sepang, you know, they weren't far off. <laughs> they weren't far off those times either. So you're like, there is more, there's more to go. And remember, right? They were doing 57s. I think Peko did a 56 something in qualifying. Do you know what I mean? So they were. Yeah, well off. Two. It was a new record. Yeah. They, so they were well off, well off the, the qualifying pace that they could do with the first opening laps of, of a mm -hmm. sprint race. Do you know what I mean? So, so for me, yeah, they, they, I do, I do believe. I do believe he looked comfortable. And then he did do uh, an interview after. And he was like, he's like, I don't know what it is. He said, I was very comfortable. I was, you know, a uh, thing. And he's like, and it always seems to happen to me that when I get comfortable and whatnot, um, he's like, I wasn't pushing. I wasn't thing. He's like, and then these stupid mistakes creep in. So um, now he did hit a bump, um, which took the front. So, and he's like, and he's like, I can't understand it because I've hit that bump so many times before, and nothing's happened. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, uh, he's made it. He's made it hard work. Like, realistically, MotoGP is so freaky now that you can't really rule anything out. Like, okay, Martin is going to the last round of the championship. Twenty-four points in the lead should be in the bag. It's in the bag. <laughs> one, like like there's one hand and three fingers on the trophy that's that's the way i put it yesterday yeah. evening right now he has one hand and two fingers on the trophy you know and barcelona as a track it's probably not the one for our, um it's probably not the one for for martin do you know what i mean and um, we're going to go to that track it's going to be cold and it's going to be cold, oh, cold. are they going to barcelona it's going to yeah, it's going to Barcelona, so okay, it's going to Mount Melo. That, um, that's news to me. So yeah, so it's going to Mount Melo. Still on the same date, I, is my understanding. Uh, so the circuit of Catalonia, Mount Melo. Uh, so you know that circuit. Okay, it has bad memories for Peco. Um, I think Martin did win there. Alexis Spagro had that amazing oops, if you remember, uh, where he thought the race was over one lap before the end. Of the race. <laughs> Um, but yeah, look, like for all intents and purposes, like if I was a bookie, I'd be paying out on Martin at the moment. But you just never know. Like that circuit, when we go there, it's going to be cold. It's low grip anyway. Who is to say someone doesn't spin it out coming out of turn two and get run over and it's no more good for the rest of the race weekend? Do you know what I mean? At that point, yeah. you know, all Peco needs is is uh, some decent jump. You know, 24, 12, 24 points, you know, that's all he needs. So, um, yeah, look, 
it's it's still one one hand and two fingers in my view on on the trophy. Um, I would be delighted to see him win it if if I'm honest, because he's deserved it. He's he's gone and won it in my view. Um, but yeah, fuck it. It, it. Like today's race, in my view, was probably the best five laps that I've ever seen. It did, to be fair, taper off. Um, after it, um, uh, there were a good few battles throughout the grid. Um. But again, TV didn't really show it. And it's one of the things I'm kind of excited about uh, Liberty Media. And I know a lot of people are not, but I don't know if any of you watched Formula One, um, especially within um, within the UK and Ireland and that on Sky TV. But there's multiple buttons that you can press on your, your, your TV. So you can go in and you can actually go on the race and do complete the whole race, listen to your riders uh your favorite driver or rider let's just say driver you can go on your favorite driver's onboard camera and you can hear his um you know his team radio all for the whole race do you know what i mean um there's like the battle channel then that they show all the different battles throughout the grid going down so it doesn't just follow the um it doesn't follow or doesn't just follow the race leaders or, or the, what the live feed is um which i think is i think it's kind of cool do you know what i mean so uh if you know there's a good battle or if you're watching the timing and you yeah, can well, see... i don't know it's gonna do me any good i'm american i don't know a lick of any other language yeah but it's all in english over here like do you know what i mean oh. well i don't yeah, know if so... there's gonna be english if the, if the guys on the bike start spouting it you know i don't know if he's in a good english i don't i, I don't know I in, still, heat of, you know, I, in, heat, in heat of the battle, I don't think he's going to go, oh, let me watch my P's and Q's. Oh, no, no, no. But you see, like, they don't they don't give the audio instantly. Do you know what I mean? So it will go through a filter. So, oh, so, oh okay. So, so if someone turned around and said a naughty word, like, there'd be a beep. <laughs> okay, so they probably oh, do yeah. that with, so they probably do that with, you're saying they do it with a, an English filter, like if he says it in Italian, it's going to come up in English. It would, no, it would, it would still filter it, yeah, but it would come up in English for people that are obviously living or watching it in, in, in English. So, um, yeah, look, I thought I loved the, I lo- I loved the battle, um, and I hope we can see more more of it um, in, in Catalonia. I just hope it stays clean and fair, which I still find amazing. What about qualifying? We skipped qualifying. The um, that the every Zarco did a hell of a job with on that Honda. I mean, my God, he did that on a Honda. I but it was being there with a Honda and being there with Zarco, they were so surprised that he pulled that uh, time off. I wasn't. I thought if Zarco is doing that on a Honda, there's another second in that track. You know, damn if there wasn't. Um. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Look, I think I think Zarco did well, but again. A, they blew the record out by a, a, a second. Yeah, but you kind of expect this so for, for 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 now. Like with the pace of the 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 GP twenty four, you would kind of expect it. You know the the new rear tires. So like there is evolution. So you do expect it. You know what I mean? Um. So yeah, uh Ian yeah, no, he loves the new bikes. He loves the new tech, by the way. Did you hear that? Yeah, but he just he just said they're so physical to ride. He's like it's unbelievable uh how much more physical they are with the with the air, you know. Uh, but yeah, look, I thought I thought Zarko did well. I was I, I was well impressed with him. Um uh, what else would I think? Um you know, he's, doing the, 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 one, he's doing them one lap wonders. He's the uh, he's the new Taka, you know, doing the one is, line but, kamikaze but, lap. It is, but look, look like it, it, it's nothing, nothing new on Honda's, right? Because Mark was able to do it, Crutchlow was able to do it, you know, Taka yeah. was able to do it, and then they just go fucking Why backwards. Do you, like, do, 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 do you know what I mean? It's headline hunting and hope giving, and then yeah. it's just fucking buff, you know. So, um. I was surprised with the Yamahas, though. I, I, I really genuinely thought that they would have gotten eaten. Um, now, they did run yeah. the new engine at, at over points during the weekend, um, and they ran a new electronics package with it, which apparently helped them. Um, 
but still saying that you know is this just is this just a lucky track for them too do you know what i mean um, you know what like, you know, said, um Zion was saying uh finally this is the they're blowing engines which you know, i'm not saying that in, in a derogatory way they're pushing that envelope saying fuck it you know just well, let's do, yeah you know what i mean you might as well do it at this point in time you know and yeah but it's all it but it's, give, it, give it everything it has you know if it yeah, to, but, but they were up, also able to get their extra engine this year. So, like, sorry, this race, they all had their extra or their new engine. Do you know what I mean? So, right. so you know, pace wise and, and stuff like that should definitely have gone, um, should definitely have been, um, so definitely have been there. But look, yeah, look, it's, um, like it was it was good it was good for yamaha i i was very very happy to see it um alex marquez he did a good ride as well um solid you know apparently he's found his base and very interesting comment that came out from tnt was that um alex has been settled on a setting now um where before he was constantly changing the setting and they reckon it was because mark was his brother so he so he has the same equipment and how could mark be so so much faster so they might blame himself so he joe they've been chasing a setting which i don't necessarily believe but you know look it's it's a coincidence that you hear that well alex has a has a good setting around the same time now that mark has a good setting do you know what i mean so yeah. i think they've they found a setting for the bike that naturally works and away they go um i suppose the incident in, in, in the first restart our first start of the race was pretty worrying to see and you always get worried when you see your rider's head going towards the back wheel of a bike yeah um you know and uh it's definitely Especially when something... said it got caught between the wheel <laughs> yeah, like, yeah what did yeah yeah i don't i think i think it more so hit fabio and then went towards the wheel um but look it's just one of those nature of the beast circuit in that kind of circuit where turn one is a is is a is not the natural pinch point it's actually turn two or going into turn two right mm-hmm. um and look as 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 many people have said like that circuit is designed for cars not for bikes but the but the cars don't race there anymore uh, so look there is some some something and i'm sure it'll be reviewed after it because look you know, a head, okay, a head won't fit between the spokes, luckily, but it's yeah. definitely an, an, an arm or something will. So I think something will have to be looked at uh, because, look, it could have been very uh, thing. Now, the other thing I know, I saw Simon Patterson giving out about you know, that they reshowed the the crash happening. Now, they did reshow the crash happening after all Raiders were, were announced that they were conscious and fine. Um, probably maybe a little bit too early i would agree but you know mir did run over miller's legs and that's what was the i believe the main issue um so look, well, you can always be so safe though i mean let's not kid anybody oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you say is this what are you going to do uh you know do you put the uh, uh blinders up on the side of the on the side of the uh well, they're naturally doing that anyway. Do you know what I mean? Then, then you have another problem. Then you have a problem like they had with the uh, dustbin bikes back in the fifties, and the thing will, you know, the bikes. But they have. The, track. But to be to be fair, to be to be fair, now Jake, right? Look at the front wheel. Right, uh-huh. you, you have look at the front wheel. They have the covers. They have everything on that. So realistically, the front wheel of MotoGP bike is almost covered in the internal almost part covered, of it. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. And same with the rear. The only thing that I see that is a major problem or a major worry for me actually isn't is not the is not the the, the hand going through the spokes. It's under the bike. Do you know where they have um, just in front of the rear swing arm? Do you know the way they have the little fairings underneath it? So it's underneath the main fairing. What is it? The, the splitter that runs just before yeah. the front wheel. That's the thing that's fucking freaks me out because if someone's going rolls over someone, that thing is like a fuck plow. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just going to dig into someone. So Joe, no. just in front, yeah. No, they would just bounce off of that because that, 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 it's just flat. No, it's not flat. 
It's like a fucking. It's See, like I the edge of a show. I don't know. It's like I don't think so. I, yeah. I, that, That's. I can't, see, I can't see that grabbing a hold of something that. It will grab someone. It will, yeah. I mean. Huh. I can't see that grab something that easily. No. Twelve. Yeah. Hundred percent. Have a look. Have a look at the. Uh, have a look at the Aprilia one. I think the KTM one is a double is a double uh, one as well. So definitely have a look. The Ducati don't run them, I don't think. But I think definitely KTM do. It runs just in front of the rear wheel. And right. It's supposed I mean, the, the, the water scoop, whatever the hell it is. The, the it used to be a water. It, it, yeah, it used to be a water scoop. Or uh, yeah, it used to be. The first time I saw it was a water scoop actually. Yeah. For uh, for in wet weather. But then there was one, um, and just have a look at it. Uh, there's a lovely picture here. Let me let me send it to you live on air, Jakey Boo. Yeah, I know what it looks like. I would think would you your your warmer just kind of bounce off it. There's nothing to. But remember now, if this goes over the front wheel, goes over it, over someone or someone's legs, this will actually catch. And remember, oh, if your leg went over. I think it would because the leg is thickness to it. It would yeah, jam. Okay. Exactly, or a body, or a body yeah. that's yeah. my point. That's that's the only bit, you could, yeah, yeah. That's my only that that's the only bit I ever worry about is that fucking fin that's hanging in underneath. And if it goes over someone, will if will that fucking do more damage than the tire? Do you know what, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, yeah. onto positivity stuff. Um, yeah, but look, it was it was a it was a lucky lucky one that Miller and and Binder and Fabio got away. Fabio looked, um, 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 Fabio looked like he was um, he was injured after it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, and look, there's been right so hard. He has yeah. been riding so hard. Yeah. And you know what's weird? Does it me? Or does it look like the Yamaha looks so much smaller than the other bikes? Yeah. It looks like the other bikes are going to pick on it going, uh, what are you doing here? You know? <laughs> what are you showing yeah. up here? Oh, kid. You know? <laughs> what are you doing that yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, look, it was... It was real, and look, there's been no further action taken on uh, on that either. Do you know what I mean? And it was like, it, it was actually, uh, I think uh, the rear of um, Alex Marquez's bike made contact with the front of Binder's bike, which lifted Binder, uh, and then the crash then happened. Then because um, I think uh, I think Fabio hit. Jack, Jen, Jack, how you say it? Back in front of Fabio, and Fabio then bounced off Binder. Um, so yeah, so look, it was, it, it was just look, it was one of those, um, uh, it was one of those lucky ones that we've gotten away with. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. um, obviously, then look, you know the. the, the the extreme weather in Valencia has meant that Valencia is off and Barcelona is in as the replacement. Um, and obviously, look, our thoughts and prayers are with the people in yeah. Valencia. And, and it's the right thing. Like, you know, before this race weekend kicked off, Mark was like saying, look, it's not right to be trying to put all hands on deck to get the Valencia circuit open um, yeah. for, the, for the race. And like Peko turned around and said, "Look, well, if it's running, I'm not racing." Do you know what I mean? It's just not the right thing to do there. So, so there was a, there was a lot of of political power um, internally put on on them to, to to move it, which I think is the right, which is I think is the right thing to do. Um, but again, look, it's there's a lot of people, including a friend of mine. Who has all his flights and everything booked to go to Valencia in two weeks' time, and obviously it's cancelled and, and whatnot. So he doesn't he's he's not uh, sure what is going to happen. Um, but again, look, it's it, it's one of those things. Um, you know, look, may, mainly just make sure that the people of Valencia are, are fine, and you know we can come back and race there next year. Do you know what I mean? It's not it's it's not important compared to what they're going through. Um, if I was to look at the 
Anyway, Bastanini is and and Mark Marquez is another entertaining battle that was going to go down uh, to Barcelona as well, um, or the Catalonia trek. I think there's like one or two points in it now in the championship between them for third. But saying that, Bastanini was, um, I don't know, Bastanini was very anonymous this weekend. I suppose I would call it. So, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't see much from him. You know he will, you know he will, do know he will, yeah. Yeah, it was um, a little bit weird. Um, my, well, my boy, I'm telling you, quite right. He's running so hard. I'm proud of that, man. He's running as hard. And I told you, you see the hair? The hair looks normal. I tell you, you see it? That's, that's Simon Athlete, when they when they really concentrating, yeah, they'll look normal. If they start getting funky looking, that means they're, they're, uh, their, their thoughts are somewhere else. Yeah, but look, I just think this was, you know, whatever happened within the Yamaha and the electronics this weekend. And the reason I'm saying no. So firstly, firstly, I'm a Yamaha fan and I'm delighted I saw Yamaha in what I suppose it's sixth and eighth yeah. or whatever it was, right? But with the shit season that Rins has had, the fact that he was up in eighth. Yeah, tells, I tells, tell, tell, tells me it was more that there's, <laughs> there, there's a, a bike improvement being done. Yeah, and than anything else, right? So, and I'm ha I'm very happy to see that. But the problem is, can they do this again? Can they keep doing this now? And I'm not so confident in that. Do you know what I mean? No, you're I right. Think, I think he's cranked up the horsepower. I think. Well, I think it could have been just a fresh engine. That's it. Yeah, that yeah. would have turned up. I'm sure. Look, if you fucking blow it, you blow it. Like, oh, remember. Yeah. Remember, Zarco blew an engine there, uh, which is very, uh, very, very uh, rare for the Hondas to go. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But he blew an engine, um, and it's and funny. It's like that's not, put, that's not putting him down, folks. Uh, that's part of racing. I always think people get on him too much for oh, it blew up. It's racing. It's supposed to, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's like ninety nine point nine percent. Yeah, but Honda are known for you know within circles, and this is a this is a confirmed one, right? That normal European engines and, and even the Japanese or Yamaha, their engines are about two thousand kilometers. That's their life. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Whereas Honda are always a little bit more. Hondas are normally about two two to two five kilometers. 2,500 to two or 2,200 or to 200, 2,200 to 2,500 kilometers on the engine. That's their life cycle. So, whether Honda building a bit more weight or what into the engine, I don't know. Um, to 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 extend the life, but apparently, most I most teams and uh, most manufacturers on the on the thing, except for Honda go for 2000 and hand go for slightly more and that's confirmed that's confirmed by yeah. one of the technical guys so um and i suppose that is that is kind of like an old school hand thing of oh we want to show that our bikes are reliable do you know what i mean right. so look I, I, I get it um you know but again yeah, you know, they, Yamaha, should, they, should start, they should revamp that at home because their engines at home are, are starting to take them <laughs> A back seat <laughs> so mary yeah for sure but look, i think i think um i like i i just think with it is just and uh, you know like you could even see it this weekend it was like like zarko is doing really well do you know what i mean and the others are falling way behind them so and like let's be let's be very fair zarko is very good but Zarko isn't the fucking alien. Joe, 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 and like, I will be kind of like, realistically at the moment, the Honda has no place near the top 10. None. Do you know what I mean? And he's getting it in there in qualifying. He's getting it in there in the odd races, you know, and he's, he, he's racing well, to be fair. The other Honda riders, they're very, 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 very inconsistent. Like very, very like Mir, okay, he ran over Miller's leg, so he could have been in the in the horrors today, right? Do you know what I mean? But saying that, like Mir hasn't been around and it's like Mir is a good enough rider. Like he's he's not fucking super duper 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 ultra alien, do you know what I mean? But he, he should be 
he That's should sure. be giving it. He should be giving it to Zarco. He should be. Do you know what I mean? Day in, day out. Mm-hmm. Marini, not a hundred percent sure would he be on Zarco and uh, Mir's level. He was level. supposed to be. He was supposed to be, but look, he won. He won. Like he, he did win his world titles, fair and square. Yeah, yeah, you know. But he's come off the Ducati, and like, how would I put it to you this way? He's had the ops, opposite emotions to Mark Marquez. Okay. Mark got on the Ducati and went, it fucking turns, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? And Marini got on the hand and was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know I had mean? the, the same as Zerko. Now, Zerko has learned to cope with it, right? And, you and know. What is this thing? This piece of shit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. This thing. I, I'm going to Moto2. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, look, it's it, it's just one of those things in, in, in my views that... Um, you know, Zerko has dealt with the change. Now, that's more so with experience as well that Zerko's had. Zerko's nearly ridden everything on, on the grid at this stage. I think the only thing is Aprilia, is it? In KTM? No, he rode yeah. KTM. So, no, it's only Aprilia. So, you know, he has a lot of experience on, on the different ethos of, uh, of how a bike is. And like he, he is learning and he is adapting to it well. And, uh, you know, it's still far from, from where it needs to be. And you know, look, they have two years to turn the fucking thing upside down and shake it and 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 figure it out. But you know, still, Pedro Costa, I fucking love the battle between himself and uh, Miller in the sprint. I thought that was just fucking epic, uh, epic. Do you know what I mean? I thought seven or eight times he was going to hit him. Like, <laughs> yeah. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? And it's just like. Uh, and, and I actually, I actually at one time was like, had a vision of the scrawny kid inside in the boxing ring. Do you know what I mean? Pretending yeah. to shadow boxing with something. I was like, come on, come on, come on. You might give it a one play. Yeah, come on. yeah come on, give it to you. Yeah. And he's doing all his little shimmies and all of this shit. And then you might just give him one flake, and that was the end of him. <laughs> but, you know, again, he didn't, didn't throw it up the road. Do you know what I mean? Um, because, look, like realistically, one people more race. Give, you know, I'm gonna say that people are giving Acosta crap now for for falling. It's his figure. I realize it's his first year. You know, I I think he's done phenomenal. He sure. has, but he he now needs to start showing that he's learning. Do you know what I mean? And and I know that sounds weird, but he now needs to come into into it and be like, okay, you know, next year. You're now in the factory KTM team. Like, if he if he becomes the Crash King again next season, and like Crash King for me is fine as long as it doesn't take points away from you. Do you know what I mean? Like, when Martin went down on Sat on Friday, uh, do you remember he crashed um, just towards the end of practice too? And I can remember watching it and saying to myself. Well, that's the time to crash, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And then Pecco went down Saturday. And you're kind of like going, well, that's not the fucking time to crash, is it? <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? So if he can do his crashing at the right time, I don't care whether he crashes as much or not. But, you know, was it Thailand? Trickiest weather conditions of the season. He didn't crash. And, you know, five races every week before that, he's fucking thrown it up the road after. And he now does, does though, need, he's moving into the main factory team next season. All his potential is all his potential, right? Mm-hmm. KTM are fucking ruthless. Do you know what I mean? If he's crashing yeah. out of races and scoring this and that and the other, no matter what, they're not, they're going to turn around and say, actually, maybe you're not what we thought. Do you know what I mean? And then that Did fucker gets after all they put into him for, for they're gonna they, they put knock him out in, yeah. in one year. Uh, and not not I wouldn't say one year, but like if he goes on if he goes into the into next season crashing in the first couple of races of that, I think he'll be under pressure definitely. Like you have to remember now as well, KTM are under massive financial strain. Yeah, I right? didn't realize that. Yes, but results are going like 
how would I say, if they come out and they win five races next season, right? Their MotoGP project is probably funded for the next three or four years. Do you know yeah. Mean? Whereas if they come out and they have another year like this, you, know, you will see. And 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 I would put money on it that okay, one of those teams is gone. Do you know what I mean? And it's not yeah, going to be the main please, factory yeah. one. Do you know what I mean? So, um, because what, of... what they lost, I'm surprised it didn't fold. Yeah, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Now, look, on the other side of the coin, it's all R&D and it's all marketing and it's all tax yeah. deductible for sure. Um, well, that, it, uh, it ain't tax deductible at those numbers. Well, no, okay. What, what, what the ones they're in? Yeah, yeah. But look, again, the, the whole MotoGP project is a marketing exercise, let's just be yeah. fair, and an R&D. So, yeah. I mean, some so, of it's tax deductible, but people overrate that. They're like, "Well, the whole thing's no, not the whole thing." They, yeah, they, but it's one point six billion. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But look, it's it's a small part of that one point six billion. Do you know what I mean? A very, very small part. Like, I don't think KTM are are, are in the hundred and fifty, two hundred million bracket for 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 bikes yet. Do you know what I mean? I was still, I would still think that I think Honda is still in the hundred million, maybe eighty. Probably a hundred now at this stage. How many bikes do you think that uh, you know? I'm getting that Royal Enfield. Uh, how many bikes do you think they sell a year? No idea. A million. That's not bad. You ain't shitting. That's not bad, like Joe. You know? But then, like, is that including the the one the fucking cheap weird ones that you can get over in China and fucking India and all of that? That's that's no way a fucking Royal Enfield. Um. Well, the ones that come out of the Royal Enfield uh, factory, let's put it that way. Yeah, well, I, I can tell you, right, I rode a Royal Enfield in the streets of fucking Bangalore, right, in India, right? And I know they, they upgraded them so much, but um, uh, considerably, we say. They and put just, the factory up, and uh, it was a modern factory. So. Yeah, but let me tell you, it was not what we would call a Royal Enfield over here. Do you know what I mean? It was uh, like, yeah. it was pure shite build quality you could fucking say do you know what i mean you knew it by knocking on the side of the casing of the engine that it was like instead of being three mil it was one mil you just knew that there was no build quality there so so that's why i asked you the question is like because like they're fucking piling them out like you buy a yamaha in india and let's just say it'd be ten thousand right you you could get one of those for two thousand yeah you know you know so let's we'll we'll just like there was no guarantees or or whatnot of a uh, of um quality there, but yeah, look, I think I think KTM will be under a lot of pressure next year. So I think naturally Acosta is going to be under pressure, and look again, it's like it's like growing up. Do you know what I mean? You go to college and you have your your fun and frolics, and you know you fucking settle down in life. Then you get on with it, like so. I think he's having, he's enjoying his rookie year. He's learning a lot and, and crashing is part of learning, right? But um, again, it comes down to crashing at the right time now. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Throw it up the road and practice, dial it slightly back in the race. Do you know what I mean? Um, and make sure that you're finishing. But it's it, it, this way you can't learn. There's a point where you're learning too much. <laughs> yeah. Crash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And exactly. He's, he's learning too much. Um, the Aprilia's. Like I'm fucking, I'm really worried about the Prillis, man, and I'm really worried. I was gonna but, ask you, what the hell? I, I what is? They're, they're so odd. What? When is the the uh, end? When is the end game for their uh, the engines? When they can? When they have to stop? When they stop? Uh, have to kind of develop them. The, the first race next year. First race next year. Yeah, they have to homologate the engines then uh, that, that Thursday or Friday or whatever it is, Thursday, I think. No, did uh, you see them they, when he pulled out, uh, uh, which one called pulled out, went around, came back, and then it put another tire on it or some ridiculous for, for uh, in the hours? Huh? Yeah, he pulls out, right? He's going to go in the race. He's going to do his warm-up sight-up lap. He comes back in. Oh, by the way, we forgot to put a tire on. They forgot to put a new tire on. Yeah. And like, what the heck? Yeah. It's like, I could see the engineers at KTM uh, and they probably got, what, yeah. what's the point in us doing something if you can't fucking 
you know, yeah. you get right at the track. I, I didn't and, see that now because he did finish eighth, wasn't it? Yeah, or sixth, I think. Maybe it was sixth. But, um, uh, um, yeah, but it's it, like I, I, I really worried about it because, um, I just thought he was just like, um, uh, you know, there, like, like this this round of any round was always going to be very difficult for all the Aprilias anyway, right? Because as people know, that the Aprilia bike cooks the rider anyway, right? Mm -hmm. And this was like thirty odd degrees, and huh? Did you get that fixed yet? Yep. No. 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 So the lads were going to be were being cooked. Um. And then there was actually, it was hot. Do you know what I mean? Track temperature was what, like 60 or 53 or whatever it was. The bikes were fucking 100 degrees. You know, like it, it's it's something it's something very, very strange. And again, look, this is kind of, this goes back to a lot of the stuff that, that I was, I've been mentioning about the, the Aprilia bike is like, have they gone too far into the ground effect? Have they gone... Yeah, have they not got the right balance now? You know, too much like, eggs in one basket. Yeah, like they look. They like if you look at the bike, the bike is a fucking beast in 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 the way it looks, right? But then it cooks the rider, right? Yeah. All the heat travels right up into the, into the rider, right? And it 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 seems more agile for the for the corners, which which is fucking great. If you're riding on your own, yeah, do, do you know what I mean? And it doesn't seem to have the hybrid blend that the other manufacturers have. No, okay, Honda don't understand it, but they have it. <laughs> okay, uh, when you look at KTM, they they somewhat understand it, but they have a blend of both, and Ducati have a blend of both. Do you know what I mean? So, I think they're they're too far too far in the wrong direction. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I would be expecting the new Aprilia to be very similar style to the Ducati, you know, and I like I, I would see um Jorge kind of going along that thing, right? Because being fast and smooth through a corner is not really Jorge's style. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? He's a V V type well or maybe a elongated youth type rider, which is not really gonna roll on the on the Aprilia. I think Pasecki would be okay with it, but I I don't think um think so. Like for me next year, I'm really worried. They have to get the engine right, but also they have to they also have to solve that rider problem of cooking the rider, which I still can't understand why they haven't fixed it. You know, Joe, like this has been going on for two or three years now. Do you know what I mean? Jorge's the one that got the passed out from heat, if you don't recall last year. So it's the pack. Yeah, I hope he's not one of people that just can't you know be in shape, but they can't take heat. You ever, I don't know if you ever seen that. that yeah, that. yeah, yeah. It's it's just it's just worrying. But also, then I'm looking at their riders, right? And I know, yes, okay, they're fatigued with heat, right? But it's just like I I, I do genuinely wonder is Elish interested anymore? Do you know what I mean? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, Maverick, I think he's Maverick, already. No, I, I don't. I, I don't think he's jumping for joy to be there, or just anywhere. Yeah, I think. I think like he's just like, can we get into twenty twenty five already? You yeah. know. Uh, and Raúl, Jesus, I just don't know, man. I just, I still, I'm Allegedly still struggling. Fine. Uh, yeah, I'm still struggling to understand that decision. I could understand maybe a one year. I think, but I think they signed him two years. I can't have to check that. <laughs> um, you know, and talk I know about times. What about Mortabelli to, to, to Mortabelli to do uh, the, the, the Ducati again? Got re signed, yeah. Well, he's going to VR46, so he had to go there. Like, you know, oh, come on, what is this guy has pictures? I'm telling you, he has pic naked pictures of uh, Rossi with some, some <laughs> early man or something. I don't know. Well, you see, they can't dump him, they just they can't right now dump him. You see, like it's it's one of those things, right? Where Vieri is not ready to come up yet, right? Or Vietti, sorry, Vietti, isn't it Vietti? 
yet he's not ready to come up for Moto Two yet. Um, but I think when he does, I think I think uh, Franco will be um, a victim. Yeah, but if, being as more 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 rally, I'd be like, listen, hey kid, you're coming in there one year early. If if you don't do that well, don't sweat it because we knew this. You know, Mortabelli was going to screw up anyway. Well, Franco's not doing too bad. You know, give. Where is he in the championship? I think he's the tenth. Yeah, it just he's so yeah. I mean, this year he's not done that bad, but he seems to be very hot and cold. He's either comes up in eighth or something like that, and then he's sixteenth or nineteenth. It's one of well, the yeah. Look, look, there is like he is he is inconsistent, right? He is, but he's had a few. He's had a few good flashes of um brilliance this season to be fair he's done some really really good battles and overtakes in this thing he's gone way overboard rather, at times I, me personally i'd rather give a kid experience than, than watch him have flashes yeah but your man is just not ready jake and he's not right and you'd actually be ridiculed i i would prefer to be ridiculed for giving someone one more chance then Joe brings someone up and actually going to be dangerous. <laughs> it, it, you know what I mean? Because like, like, like we said it with Agora, right? Like Agora won the championship this year, I believe, isn't it? In Moto Two. Yeah. And like we were saying for years and years that he's not ready yet. He's not ready yet, right? And then he started getting his confidence and started this, that, and the other, right? And now, let's see how he goes. You know, he's, but like he. He seems to have his head screwed on his shoulders because he said no to Honda. Do you know what I mean? Like everyone would have thought he would have been immediately in there, um, but he's not. You know, so so for me, um, there is a big difference uh, between being ready and, and being not ready. And 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 I do get what you say about giving a kid a chance, but you know, you look at you look at for me and Aldegar, right? They so gave he gets two, he gets two rookie years out of it, you know, instead of one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, like for me and Aldeguer, right, who at the start of the season, a lot of teams, including Ducati, put their money on that this is the next big thing. We're only going to find, like, we don't even know, is he ready? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, and it, it's a big risk, but it's not such a big risk because they put him into a satellite team where he can grow and this, that, and the other. Whereas, this young chap Vietti is if they put him into VR46, he's going into VR46 on a VR46 contract, which means what? It means that VR46 will be paying him and for his crash damage, which yeah. probably be very expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he's not, if he's not ready. So anyway, look, I think I think it's good. But again, Aprilia's. They have a lot of work to do to sort their stuff out for for next season because it's not really uh, it's not really looking good. Do you know what I mean? Um, but all in all, look, look, that's it. Um, Andrea Iannone, I, I like I have to take my hat off to him. Look, and I'll be very honest, I would have preferred to see Buliga. Um, and for the simple reason is that he, he is a young fellow and you give him a chance of two races yeah. and this, that, and the other. It was always very doubtful that that would happen, um, considering VR46 fired Bulliga from the Raiders Academy. So it would have been a bit of egg in their face if if he would have he would have got it um, got a run. But saying that. Super impressed with Ian, Ian, Ian O'Neill. You know. Oh, like, after I, five I, years, he's damn straight. Huh? After five years? About yeah, it. but he, he was just like he was a safe. He was a safe pair of hands. There was a there was a funny moment actually on Friday where he was trying to get the launch control settings ready, and yeah. Zeki pulled up ahead of him or beside him, and it was kind of overlooking just to make sure that he did it right. It was it was just a funny moment, like do you know what I mean? It was kind of like. Are you sure you're all right? <laughs> Without saying those words, of course. Um, but no, look, I, I, I thought he did really, really well. Um, you know, and there is a big difference coming from Superbike back into into MotoGP. You know, uh, 
But yeah, and I know someone did question that was he banned for life? No, he was banned for four years or four whatever years. it was. Four years. Um, blood uh, doping. It, but, huh? Blood doping. Which, you know, if, uh, some people know what it is, is. Is you put extra blood into your system. It's not drugs. You're putting extra blood into your system. Like if you're somebody a, did. I don't yeah. know what he did. Yeah, you take extra blood and put it in your system, so therefore you can hold more oxygen because you're holding have more blood in your system. All oh, right, okay. You didn't put drugs in those systems just for. All right, I thought I thought. Oh. All right, I didn't know why he was. But look, everyone deserves a second chance, I suppose. Right. Um. Yeah, but look, I look. He he did it well. I thought you know he he held. I thought he held his own. Um. All in all, though, look, I think we were treated to um, to a really, really good race weekend. Uh, I, I actually now can't wait for Barcelona, um, who's going to come out and top there, you know. And what we've seen from Martin, all right, this weekend was that um, he wasn't riding stiff. Um, but I think the next re- race weekend will be a little bit different. Do you know what I mean? Um like if you if you remember uh when Pecco <laughs> I don't know if you ever if you remember it, but Pecco went in with Fabio and he had a twenty three point advantage. Do you remember that? Yeah. Last race. And he finished ninth and he looked like a fucking novice racing. Do you remember? Yeah. Um so so there's that. Also I think the fact that um Valencia is not the last race and that it is thing. It actually favours Peco because Peco is fucking useless around Valencia. Well, he's not useless, but he doesn't like it. You know, like, yeah, they said so, it's the worst track or second to worst yeah, track. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of suits him that it was off. Obviously, that's, that's, how would I say? That's, that's a byproduct of, of what's happened. Of course, he would prefer what's happened didn't happen over in Valencia. Of course, but in 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 a racing terms, I think it it suits him more that it's at a different track. Um, but I think we're going to get more of the same in Barcelona. I think we're going to get the two boys hopping off each other. And like, you're if you're Peco, right now you have f- fuck all to lose by throwing it up the road. You're already your championship is already nigh on over, right? So, like today, today I can tell you a hundred and ten percent. If that came down to the last corner, last lap, Peko was going to bounce off him. Yeah. 100%. Bounce off him. To the, uh, I up thought he the was inside. Baiting. For a while, I thought, is Peko baiting him? But like, he seemed like he would get ahead. And then I think he would, he would the, the, that uh, Martin would seem to catch up. And I'm wondering, is he baiting him to try to make him make a mistake, the fall? Oh, he, he was, yeah. 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 Now, the, the only thing I did like about it, there was a comment after after it, and they asked Pecco, and they're like, why didn't you slow Martin down to let the others catch up? And Pecco's like, it's not the way I ride. Yeah, and when I, I don't think the other guys would have helped him out either, you know. But well, it, well, well, Mark would definitely have harsed it up the inside, like 100%. Yeah, yeah he like, would have like, tried, yeah, he would have tried to take, yeah. Like, take 100%. I can see Mark though. You're right. Yeah. So, like, if he if he slowed the pace and backed him backed him into the others. Yeah. But he was just like, it's not it's not really the way we ride. And like, you could definitely see it. Like, I know people are talking about the twenty fours and the difference and this that and the other, right? Um, hundred percent. But mark was ahead of two other 2024s that weren't producing right and the riders weren't producing and my my kind of point here is that okay the 24 is fast right but the two boys today no one would have caught them no one do you know what i mean they would have fucking to struggle to stay with them so even on the same equipment maybe mark could have maybe but i don't know they had there was a bit more piss and vinegar in today's fight, Joe, between those two boys, yeah. whereas Mark would, and I think Mark would have just sat back a bit and let them fight for a while. Do you know what I mean? And wait till they fucking they flat each other out and then taken them. Do you know what I mean? Because if that race went on for say six or seven laps, the lads would have had no tire left. 
No, yeah. gone. Do you know what I mean? And Mark knows that it's so much easier to take one at a time and pass somebody than two. Mm. You know what I mean? But I think so. But I, what I, what I, what I, what I, what I, what I mean is like those guys were going off from the from 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 the goal. They they were got they were shotgun start like. Do you know what I mean? Off it is. Do you know what I mean? And. Really, I'm surprised that Paco got a good start. Every time he after the race, he goes to do the uh, the start. They have, they have a new apparently. Uh, they heard that uh, Ducati has a new launch system, and every time he does the launch system from practice, it it screws up. Mm. Did you yeah. see that? Yeah, but you see, like he's still he's still losing those t- two or three yards on the start from Martin. So like he has to, like I wouldn't be surprised if Paco is out in some fucking field. Well, not field. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And practicing this fucking start because the start is not going like he's losing that three yards, four yards. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's all that makes the difference. And like you look at it, Martin on Saturday, he, he like he didn't put under pressure at the start. He just leveled him. Do you know what I mean? And took the line and went to nothing major. Do you know what I mean? Today, Peko kind of baited him into it. Do you know what I mean? Like made him made. Excuse me. Made Martin break first, and then Peko break harder. Does that make sense? Yeah. Went down to the inside of him. But so look, all in all, I thought it was a pretty good race. Well, the first five laps was fireworks. The rest of it was kind of like a little smoldering bomb. Then do you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, it was all good in my view. And that's about it for me this week. I think Jakey Poo. I think we'll uh, we'll wrap it up there. Yeah. And by the way, I had never seen this for side people. They get this bias of Enfield. The people that are so excited to buy a bike, it's like it's like going back to the nineteen eighties or seventies. They're so excited about buying this piece of shit bike. You know, it, it's this little simple ass thing. And you know what that creates? Lots of little race fans. Who was excited about the bike? The the people that are buying these Enfields. Oh yeah, they yeah, are yeah. so happy. It's like. They're First so, like, so are you saying now that we're going to see you like in the old school, dressed up in the old fucking regale and shit with a pipe and all this fucking crap now? No, no, no. And, no, your, and your little no. Royal Enfield and you fucking pootling no. along with. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. This was so a I, could, I could be. I could be at the side of the uh, at the highway going, "I'll race you," and then pull out the and then, then pull out the freaking MV. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I'll race you. Yeah, hold a second. You want to race you? Okay, I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, Let's shit. come back with, with an angry motherfucking thing, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But now these people adore this bike. I mean, good. It, but no, that makes little racers because little race fans. Because when they do that, they're that excited. They're like, remember when you were a kid and you had your first bike and you were like eight or nine, or whatever, and, and the bike went forty miles an hour, yeah. 50, and you thought it was going a hundred. You know, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah every yeah. every ride was a race. You know. That's the same with them. They think that gets them into racing. So you got a million people a year, mm-hmm. right? As potential racers. I race get it. Uh, look, I, I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I eat my Honda 50. Yeah. 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 But I mean, I know you're laughing at me, but. Uh, no, no. <laughs> I just, I just, la- I just laugh at. Uh, I'm just laughing actually because I always remember myself and my, my buddy, we used to go to. Um, we used to go where what's the name of it we used to go to a, a, a town called ross carberry but it's like it's in west cork right but it's it's about two hours yeah it's about an hour and a bit here from from where i live by car right on a Honda 50 is about two and a bit hours but i always remember i was able to light a cigarette inside my helmet while driving down the road <laughs> And then there were some hills that we were getting off the fucking bike and pushing it up. Anyway, on that bombshell, we will wrap it up there for this week. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. And we will see you all again next week. Hasta la vista, baby. Ciao for now. <laughs>